Everyone is terrified of being left alone. For many of us, we sometimes can make decisions that seem crazy just to avoid that very thing. And Igor is a testament of that, an eccentric and very unusual type of love story that hides a character tormented in a cycle of uncertainty, jealousy, and obsession that he can never get out of, ever. That character is e The first song on the record is Igor's theme, and it acts in a way as a sort of opening credits to the album. As you just heard, the album starts with this very distinct bass sound, which will be used throughout the entire album, every track, which makes this album very consistent in its sounds. And to me, it really feels like one big song that you could just like listen to again and again. Igor's sound is very unique, and this track serves as an introduction to this weird, eccentric world. This album is so far from anything Tyler has made before that it even released with a statement from Tyler himself, telling people to not expect a rap album. Just go on a drive, walk, whatever, just fully listen to it. Obviously considering the title of this song, this acts also as our first introduction to the main character of this album, Igor, a new alter ego of Tyler. If you didn't know by now, each Tyler the Creator album has an alter ego that is attached to it. For now, we don't know much about Igor except for his pretty unique physical style, which when Tyler was asked about why Igor looked like that, he said, Where did the idea for the wig come from? I don't want you to like dismantle it to the point where it's not mysterious and fun anymore, but what, what is Igor? Like? Bro, I just what is it? thought it was cool. <laughs> oh, okay. If we look at a lot of interviews on Igor, Tyler doesn't provide meaning or uh, answers on most of what's happening on the record, because as he said in his opening statement, he wants people to figure out what it means for themselves. So, of course, Tyler didn't mention a reason for calling this new alter ego Igor, but we can kind of guess this is related to the mad scientist's lab assistant, Igor, who helps the mad scientist create Frankenstein, and even mimicking his appearance on the cover, depicting Tyler with an eye slightly bigger than the other. And that's cool and all, but without any context, it's kind of hard figuring out what this means yet. So let's start at the beginning. The first actual lyric in the album is running. Running is a theme that comes back a lot in Igor. Not only with track titles, but also with the heavy breathing that's all over this album. Tyler is breathing a lot on here, even on Igor's theme to kind of mimic someone running. And we also get the chorus on this song. Which, you know, you can tie with how Tyler wanted all of us to listen to the album originally. Go on a walk, take a drive, run, whatever. But if we're starting a story right now, it kind of contextualizes the running. Tyler is running, right? Riding around town. But the real interesting part to me is they're gonna feel this one, this time. They are gonna feel it. There is something happening for real this time. I can't explain it either, but remember this. And in the last main bar of this song, we get... Tyler has got his eyes open at that point. He can finally see something. But not for long, because he finally meets him. Earthquake is a song where we get introduced to the love interest of this story, a man, which we actually need a name. And you know what that means. Give me a name for a man who knows someone named Igor, who's actually Tyler the Creator. Eric? It sounds solid and doesn't immediately give away any hints about Tyler the Creator's identity. If we name him, er <laughs> it's gonna give us some time. They're not gonna find out straight away. Did you make my earthquake? Oh, make my earthquake. 
right off the bat, we're taken aback by Tyler's pitched up voice here, which contrasts so much with albums like Goblin, for example, where he pitches his voice down a lot. This choice was apparently made because Tyler always wanted to sing on an album and didn't like his deep voice. Tyler explains that Eric makes him feel things he doesn't completely understand yet, explaining it like an earthquake, like how this person's love is shaking Tyler up and it's making his art break. Like it's super cute, but this is not the start of the story where they're meeting for the first time and everything is just perfect and great for our, both our characters. There is something wrong. This line is interesting, because first, it's a double meaning, one being someone's fault, and the other being about the fault lines of an earthquake. But right away, it indicates history between the two. It's like they already know each other when he says, don't leave, it's my fault. It's like Tyler did something bad to this person, or made some kind of mistake. And then we get the famous Playboy Cardi verse, acting as the voice of reason in these trying times. Even Tyler said in the lyric book, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. All I can hear is... Which it tells us that whatever Tyler's fault was, He's still very serious about this guy. But who is this guy? We know he makes Tyler pretty shaken up and even torn apart for something he did. But are they dating? Are they friends? Just from this line, we can tell that they are probably not dating. If Tyler is so affected emotionally by this guy, but he's also wondering if that guy likes him back. It's most likely because Tyler is friends with him and has a crush on him. If Earthquake is a song about Tyler catching feelings for this guy, I think is a song about Tyler realizing he's catching those feelings and asking himself, what the fuck's happening to me? Tyler is starting to show feelings for this guy, like previously in Earthquake, but mostly trying to figure out what's going on in this guy's head. What's his perception of me? Feelings, that's what I'm pulling. What the fuck is your motive? Tyler wants a romantic relationship with Eric, even tying it with a bar mentioning the movie Call Me By Your Name. Man, I wish you would call me. But we're left in the dark, like Tyler at this point. He doesn't know what Eric thinks of him, but he does explain in great detail how Eric makes him feel. This guy is taking such a big space in Tyler's mind that he's becoming a distraction. He's just constantly thinking about him. This is all illustrated very well in the I Think music video, where Tyler is in a club, encounters his crush and ends up literally running after this guy, trying to find him after he lays eyes on him. Tyler's in love. And maybe you may be asking yourself, is it real this time? Yes. With all this out of the bag, Tyler just wonders at this point, how can I tell him I love him? Because at this point, he didn't make a move. He didn't tell him anything. Can he just like grow some balls and shoot a shot right away? No, of course not. See how he's obsessed with what Eric thinks of him. Just in Earthquake, for example. He's scared of scaring him away and losing his crush. So he decides to try and get his attention first by buying him stuff. And Tyler realizes that by doing that, he's kind of becoming his puppet in a way. 
Eric can manipulate Tyler however he wants, because he's like a simp right now. But like, puppet, he's just buying him stuff. It's not that big of a deal, right? Apart from that, the song ends with nothing we haven't seen before. But the video does end with something pretty major. Tyler has been chasing his crush from the start of the album with no significant progress. But at the end, we see Tyler's crush approaching him for the first time, which tells us one thing. There actually might be some interest from Eric's side. The next track on Igor is Boyfriend. And before you say, no, it's exactly what you, whatever the name is, on CDs and vinyl editions of Igor, Boyfriend replaces that track to make up the actual complete version of the album. I think ended with Tyler realizing he's falling in love and mostly wondering ways to confess his love to Eric. Now, Boyfriend is where Tyler takes action and tries to tell Eric he loves him in other ways than just saying it right away. Literally just flirting, but in a very shy and discreet way in order to not scare him away. And that shyness and fear is already noticeable by how Tyler sings on this song. So he tries to give compliments to the guy, also continuing to buy him stuff with his money like an I think, but mostly giving his time away, being always available for him. Let you roll the dice, but I've made my choice. Tyler is all in. He's chosen him. But for Eric, it's like a dice roll, which makes it obvious that Despite Tyler's flirting, and even Eric seemingly being interested in Tyler at the end of I Think, there's something holding him back. Eric is rolling the dice on this relationship, playing around it in a way, and Tyler is saying, well, there's no time for that, I just want to be with you. Stop rolling the dice, stop playing these games. Tyler is still running for whatever reason. And despite all of these signals that Tyler is sending to Eric, he doesn't even seem to pick up on it, or at least doesn't want to show it to Tyler. You need to read between the lines. Stop some shit funny. He's just thinking of all these signals as a joke. You think my hair is nice today? Oh, you're so funny, bro. Even though Tyler is not saying upfront, I want to be your boyfriend to his crush, Eric can't like not know at this point. So why isn't he saying either no or sure, let's be boyfriends? It's subtle in this song. It seems Eric feels pressure from a social standpoint. What would people say if I went out with a guy? And that's something we haven't talked about yet in this video, this guy's sexual orientation. Eric is probably a closeted bisexual or gay man. And Tyler seems to know that already, saying he's seen all his cards. And with that, boyfriend concludes, well, almost. Exactly what you run from, you end up chasing. Tyler has been running in some way ever since this album started, with his repetitive breathing, in his lyrics, but also in the story, with Tyler in a way chasing after his crush, trying to be his boyfriend. But if we look at this quote, we can get a glimpse of the future. If Tyler is chasing after his crush right now, he might end up running from him later on. Giving it everything that you can. There's always an obstacle. Running out of time, running out of time, running out of time. The start of running out of time makes one thing obvious. All of Tyler's efforts to make this guy fall in love with him have not worked yet. Running out of time. What is this barrier 
that's holding Eric from going forward with this relationship. There's some things that this guy is hiding from us. Tyler is still head over heels for this man, but he's running out of ideas or spells, as he says, to make Eric love him. I've been running out of spells. Let's make you love me. Imagine being in that situation, how frustrating it must be for Tyler. No matter what he tries, he's always hitting a brick wall and can't even get answers on what this guy feels for him. And in a way, he feels like he's drowning. But weirdly, he's starting to be comfortable with that. But what are those secrets that make Tyler feel like he's running out of time? Well, the first one is one that shouldn't surprise you. Living and pretend. In Boyfriend, we learned Eric felt some sort of social pressure from others and was pretty self-conscious about what others would think of him if he went out with a guy. But this lyric confirms that to Tyler, he is not being himself. He's hiding his identity behind a mask. But it's not the end of the world, right? Maybe it's gonna take some time for Eric to feel at ease, but surely after some time they're gonna end up together, right? But remember, there's no time, cause there's another secret. Take your mask off, I need out the picture. What the fuck? Who the fuck is this girl? This is the only mention of her in this track, and in the four tracks before, she was nowhere to be seen, and this bar, I need her out the picture, tells us that there's a girl in the mix. It's not clear right now who this girl is, but in later tracks, we learned that this girl is Eric's ex-girlfriend. So now we really know why Tyler is running out of time to make Eric love him. There's some competition between him and the ex-girlfriend. But let's hold on just for a second. Before continuing, I feel like it's the perfect time to set something straight because up until this point, this story has been pretty clear except for one thing, the beginning. This story starts with a guy running and then falling in love with another guy who's about to leave for an unknown mistake Tyler made. This isn't a beginning. It's a weird way to start a love story. But that's because it doesn't start there. Think about it, right from the start, we're missing two crucial moments before Igor's theme. Our introduction to the characters, when they actually meet for the first time, and Tyler's supposed mistake he makes. That's the beginning of their story, and it's missing. Now, we can't figure out how these two met originally, it's impossible just because of how this story is told, but however, we can guess what this mistake was. What's the one thing that could have made Eric want to leave? Tyler pressuring Eric to come out. Originally, before the album in a way, Tyler probably met Eric, fell in love with him, and started flirting with him until Eric got scared of public opinion. And that's where Igor starts with Tyler begging Eric to not leave for this mistake he made, trying to take off his mask. So this all happened before. This is not the first time Tyler tries to be Eric's boyfriend, and that's why he's moving slowly this time, because he's afraid of being left alone, but he's running out of time. This is the obstacle, which given the whole context is maybe a person Eric is falling back to because he's not out yet. He's like, no, I'm not gay, I'm with my girlfriend. And that's why Tyler is running out of time to make this guy love him. And he tries to tell him, you need to start being yourself. Stop lying for these niggas, stop lying to yourself. I know the real you. I know the real you. Stop lying to everyone and yourself. Take off your mask, let go of her, and be with me. But I'm still running out of time. Tyler ran out of spells, so he needs a new idea to make it work. A new spell, a new magic wand. 
Sometimes you gotta close the door to open a window. In New Magic Wand, Tyler is convinced that the only way to make this relationship work is by getting this ex-girlfriend out of the picture completely. Like you start noticing, it's becoming pretty obsessive. And it makes sense right from the bat when we hear sometimes you gotta close the door to open a window. Closing the door on another relationship to let yours bloom. And that's exactly what Tyler tries to do here. I saw a photo, you joyous. Right from the start of the song, Tyler is full of jealousy. His eyes are green, which is commonly associated with jealousy. Just look at this quote from Shakespeare's Othello, for example. I need to get her out the picture. She's really fucking up my friend. Tyler doesn't think their relationship is as developed as his with Eric and ends up thinking, I can make her disappear. What magic? What magic? What magic? Yeah. Despite being six tracks in, there's been no real progress in Tyler and Eric's relationship. And on top of that, Eric is starting to spend way more time with his ex-girlfriend. Tyler gave away his time, his money, his love, and got nothing back. And the only reason he can think of as to why he doesn't have this guy's focus is this girl. Why is she getting all the attention and I'm not after everything I gave you? So Tyler is terrified of being left alone by this guy. Which is a line that could ring a few bells, cause it's pretty much the same to the one on Earthquake. Don't leave, it's my fault. But notice how different he says it. While on Earthquake, it's a more emotional and heartfelt tone. On New Magic Wand, he seems lifeless almost like a serial killer tone. It shows how much this situation with this guy's ex is making Tyler incredibly angry and jealous. And then he can't contain this rage. He just starts screaming obsessively, screaming how much he wants to be with this guy, and how he's tired of the way he's getting treated, and the mixed signals he's been getting from Eric. Tyler is so obsessed with this man that he's convinced that murdering his ex-girlfriend is the way to go to make their relationship finally work. And now this gives a whole new meaning to the new magic one. This is not a let's cast a spell to make you love me. No, it's a gun now. And with that, I can't help but associate all this with albums like Goblin and Bastard, for example. Not only New Magic One is a song that's a perfected version of French, a song from Bastard, but it's crazy how this is just one of Tyler's older alter egos getting brought up again. Troncat, which did the same thing. In those albums, he rapped about raping and murdering a girl just because she didn't want to go to prom with him. I told you, Igor is not a normal love story, despite it sounding like it sometimes. It's getting more and more obsessive the more we go through it. And this all goes even further to the point that Tyler asks Eric to choose a side now. Is it me or her? And that if he doesn't choose, he'll just kill them both. I pick a side and if you don't. This also ties into the promotional material for the album. The album was initially promoted with those mysterious posters saying vote Igor. This doesn't have anything to do with politics. Tyler wants to be chosen by his crush. He's stating his case and he wants Eric to pick a side. And at the end of this song, he's not mentally stable but he decides to just plead his case. And surprisingly, even though he just said he'd be willing to be murdering his crush, he goes right against the violent lines we just heard. 
this situation is affecting him so much he just starts saying nonsense. And remember, right now, he's stating his case. He's like, please don't leave me alone. I'ma kill this bitch so we can be together. But if you don't want to, I'ma kill you too. But I'm so afraid of the idea that you won't be here with me. See how crazy I sound. And this other dude is there, listening to all of this. And what do you think any normal person would feel like hearing this? It wasn't the girl Tyler made disappear like magic. It was the last hope of his own relationship. A boy is a gun couldn't be more literal here. Tyler's crush holds this relationship at gunpoint, and Tyler begs him to not shoot him down. With the reaction Tyler had on New Magic One saying, I want to kill you and your ex, Eric is like, what the fuck? Eric looked concerned. He's thrown off by Tyler acting like this. And this is embodied pretty well in the Boy is a Gun video, where Eric is basically avoiding Tyler and kind of ignoring him in some way. One quick side note I'd like to add while I'm editing this, this video has a lot of situations where it feels a bit like Eric and Tyler are actually dating or in some kind of relationship, which made me think maybe after I think, Tyler and Eric actually start dating and are not just crushes. I still think Eric and Tyler don't start dating and are just friends during that period, especially because of that lyric in Boyfriend. But I don't know, it's just a detail, but I still didn't want people thinking I overlooked this. So comment, tell me what you think, I'm genuinely interested. Anyway, back to the video. Throughout these last tracks, Tyler's perception of his love interests has changed a lot. Remember how cute it was in songs like Boyfriend, for example? He's just wondering what he thinks of him and hoping he can go out with him. Now, what he was so desperate to get, he's now scared of it because Eric can hurt him now. His worst fear is Eric leaving him. Exactly what you run from you end up chasing. It's also interesting considering the last lyrics from New Magic Wand, where Tyler says he may kill his love interest if he doesn't choose him. The no don't shoot me down line might also be what the other guy thinks right now, or even the ex-girlfriend. Please don't shoot us down. Therefore, in their own way, each boy is a gun. Take your hoodie off, why you hide your face from me? Despite Tyler's ultimatum on New Magic One, his crush still hasn't made a choice, and still is hiding his true self. And Tyler is still trying to convince him to be himself. Make your fucking mind up, I am sick of waiting patiently. But now, Tyler is trying to figure out if he's in the right place. How come you the best to me? I know you the worst for me. See, even Tyler is starting to notice how this obsession he has for Eric is detrimental to both of them. It's toxic, it's just not good. And you can see how this is tearing him apart just in this verse. He's saying, oh boy, you're sweet as sugar, I love you, but I'm like Spider-Man with his spider sense. I sense danger in coming. You so motherfucking dangerous. You so motherfucking dangerous. But in the second verse, Tyler's like, what if I'm the one who stands up for himself? I don't want to be your puppet anymore. Oh, you want to go home? Cool, you better call you a cat. But wait, he's going to leave again. Oh, no. You're my favorite garçon. Don't leave. Stay right here. Yeah, I want you right near. Both of them, actually, are stuck in this indecision limbo. Each boy is a gun holding each other at gunpoint like, oh, you wanna go home? Get a cab, you don't matter much to me, but don't leave me, stay right here. Who's gonna pull the trigger first and say, I don't want you near me anymore? You invited me to breakfast, why the fuck your ex here? And that's when it happens, again. This guy invites him to breakfast and his ex-girlfriend is already there too. This is even worse than before, because now Eric is not even trying to hide it anymore. In running out of time, this ex-girlfriend was one of his secrets. But now, Tyler's just third wheeling with this guy's ex. How fucking worse could it be? And this is too much for Tyler. A boy is a gun 
and he's ready to be one. I'ma leave it to strange, cause the irony is I don't wanna see you again. This is a very surprising line, because here, Tyler is the one to break it off. He's the gun now. I ain't gonna let you shut but stay the fuck away from me. A boy is a gun, and it was inevitable that someone fired a shot. But really, unintentionally, it's Tyler who got shot. Wait. Ayo. I wanna talk, I wanna call you and talk. Remember when I said that Tyler finally took control by breaking it off, firing a shot, and saying, I don't wanna be treated like this anymore. Well now forget about that. It's like shortly after Tyler breaks it off, maybe a few days or even hours after, he just starts panicking and thinking about everything he wants to do with this guy. The obsession is taking over Tyler again. Everything Tyler describes is just about having a cute relationship with this guy. It's so weird after what happened on Boy Is A Gun, this ex-girlfriend being there at that breakfast is enough to make him bail out on the entire relationship. But when he's all alone again, he's like, what the fuck have I done? What do you need? Do you need bread? Do you need this? Do you need... And then to fix it, just starts proposing stuff to the guy. He's like, I'll give you everything. Just tell me what it is so we can go back to when it was okay between us. Yo, number one, one on my list. See, I'm Santa. Where's Rudolph? Your pair city. The only reason... Tyler gets back to his state of enlightenment and believing how bad this relationship is for him is only because the ex-girlfriend is brought up again. You're Santa? Oh, where's Rudolph? Where's my ex? When Tyler hears about them together, he has a breakdown. I do not have some control. I am starting to wonder. Is this my free will of yours? It's like Tyler has created his own fantasy of a relationship in his head, and the only thing able to snap him back to reality is the fact that his crush spends more time with his ex-girlfriend than him. It's Tyler realizing he's like a puppet. He'll do everything he wants and give him anything he wants at this point. It's the only thing that brings him some kind of comfort. If you remember, he did mention in I Think that he was like a puppet, but it came more of a place of affection. You know, like, I'd be willing to do anything for you because I love you. This is much darker here. It's, I'd be willing to do anything for you, so you don't leave me alone. I'm your puppet. You control me. It's really interesting how Tyler seems like he's giving up when saying these words. Just look at the way he sings in the first half of the song. Super quick, super energetic and motivated about the relationship he wants with Eric. And when he realizes he's a puppet, he loses all will. He doesn't understand anymore who he is. But he does at least realize it. So, he decides to do something about it. But at some point, you come to your senses. On What's Good, Tyler doesn't go confront his crush or this ex-girlfriend, but instead seems to take ownership of who he is and always was. This in-your-face, confident person who we honestly have always known like that. <laughs> <laughs> and this comes out in so many ways throughout the song. Turn my lights on. How the fuck you cry with the mic on? First of all, all the worrying and anxiety Tyler has on previous songs is completely gone. He seems totally unfazed by it, which is so surprising, and expresses it on an instrumental that separates from the rest of the record, honestly. It's raw and in your face and ties it with the title of the song. What's good? I know puppet bitch, I'm Igor. But in all that confidence, there still seems to be something wrong. Which is a line that reminds us a lot of that running out of timeline. With Tyler drowning by the seashore and being okay with it. Which makes us think, 
Maybe he's lying to us. Maybe he's still there. The chorus and the next verse is really just a classic braggadocious style rap. He's rapping about how great he is, how this shit is fire, and this cements even more that he's getting back to his old self. Even more when we get to the final part of this song. Tyler goes on to talk about how he survived a car crash in 2018. This is real, by the way. He actually fell asleep at the wheel while driving back from a late night studio session. But he takes the opportunity to say how he's so great he even cheated death, you know? And this is a good example of how Tyler is regaining his confidence right now. If a car crash couldn't affect me, why would a random guy do it? The fact that he's not gonna be with this guy is not the worst thing in the world. He finally sees clearly. This is a really crucial part of the album. The instrumental goes quieter and clearer. Tyler's aggressiveness is dialed back with just him saying he sees the light. His breathing goes slower and slower, like he's finally catching a breath. As if he's, after a long time, finally done running. I don't know what's harder, letting go or just being okay with it. Gone Gone Thank You is the biggest turning point on Igor. Like every 10th track on a Tyler project, this song is separated into two parts, starting with Gone Gone, an introspective track where Tyler reminisces on their relationship up to this point and actually lets it go. The track starts with Tyler seemingly being nostalgic about a memory they had together, and it reminds him of the time Tyler fell in love with him. This guy being like a warm summer breeze to his cold December weather. But it's weird, Tyler doesn't even seem to remember when it was. Tyler then recounts, in a way, what happened. Tyler was ready and set for a serious relationship. Eric was uncomfortable with taking his mask off and just flew away. We already know that, but this time, Tyler has a different reaction to it. At least I had it, instead of never. For the first time, instead of being sad or angry or frustrated, he's grateful for the time he spent with this crush, saying, at least we met, and I'd prefer that over not ever knowing you at all. He's ready to move on. My love's gone. Great, right? But still, he says something pretty weird in the chorus. With those two bars, you know, Tyler not remembering when he actually fell in love, or wondering if this is all a dream, it's weird. It doesn't fit the moment of acceptance and moving on. These are the first moments Tyler notices what's really been happening this whole time. Which I'm not gonna say what yet. But anyway, as Gone Gone is a track where Tyler is moving on, one of the things he needs to accept is the ex-girlfriend. And that's what the second verse is about. And surprisingly, he's come to terms with it. The aggressiveness Tyler had towards this girl in New Magic 1, you know, with the I'm gonna murder you tangent, it's hard to forget that one. He seems to have completely replaced it with, well, you know what? If Eric is happier with you, I just hope you got good music taste so you can make him happier. And this last line is just confirmation of what's happening. It's kind of a turn on the expression, rip the bandaid off. Tell yourself the harsh truth for once, that this isn't gonna happen. But there is one more thing he needs to acknowledge before moving on, and that's 
Eric himself. The third verse acts as kind of a summary of the album, recapping all the events we had since the start. We get even a lyric that's very similar to the one in Earthquake, for example. We know this all happened before, right? So it's kind of ironic that to make his crush come back says, don't leave, it's my fault. And at the end, he says, yeah, you're gonna leave, and it's my fault. Instead of being mad about it, he just acknowledges that he had different plans, interests, and fears in mind, making a really interesting metaphor with construction plans. The two of them had different plans for building a relationship. Tyler thought he had the permission to build something more serious, and his crush was most likely open to that, in the beginning sending mixed signals. So they started building a bridge together, and Eric got scared of public opinion, and it turned into a fence. And Tyler's building, everything he is, was shook up and tore down because of Eric's new tenant, his ex-girlfriend, a way to keep his mask on, which Tyler couldn't take. Tyler was frustrated at first, but now he says he'll just buy up some new shit, a new building, and move on. Because at the end of the day, who really lost the most? At the end, Tyler puts it this way. You never lived in your truth. I'm just happy I lived in it, but I finally found peace. And this is where it should end, honestly. He's saying it's fine if you don't want to be yourself. You have your reasons, but I can't live like that. So, goodbye. The end, right? Let me do it over. Where? Everything. But this line is what makes this album so much more than a failed love story. Did he just lie? Did he not actually find peace? Nonetheless, Igor's story doesn't quite end here. Like, I hate wasted potential. That shit crushes your spirit. It really does. It goes it's really weird how this keeps on going. It's like if you'd be watching a movie with a love story and at the end they break it off and are both okay with it, but the movie would just continue with the characters living their life like normal. That's how weird it is, but it's gotta be there for a reason. The second part of the song, Thank You, is just like an open letter to Tyler's ex-crush now, saying, thank you for everything you gave me, but I was so hurt by this that I don't want to fall in love ever again. We hear Tyler repeatedly saying throughout this part of the song, got my eyes open. The same sample that's repeated many times actually in Igor's theme, the first track of this album. But also tying it with the last line of what's good, I see the light. He's got his eyes open now. It's clear now. But it's still kind of odd why this sample is taken from Igor's theme. It could just be foreshadowing, right? But nonetheless, this story keeps on going. I Don't Love You Anymore is one of the most straightforward songs on Igor, because it's just there in the title. Tyler doesn't love this guy anymore. This verse brings an additional sense of hope, because he's actually talking about moving on to someone else. I will speak up and realize it's more fishing to see I'm a re-up. One of the most interesting things about this song is the chorus. First of all, it's one of the weirdest choruses on the album, and that's because of how he sings it. Trying to keep up because I don't love you anymore. He sings it like an angry toddler, repeating it over and over. Tyler pitched his voice up before in this album, but now it's just angry, high screaming. It's like he's just screaming it over and over again to himself in hopes that it's gonna make it true. But this just might be better for us, you know? He is still seeking fucking confirmation that this is over for real. It's like he's hoping for the guy to say, well, now that you put it this way, maybe I was wrong or something. He can't move on. These past tracks were just in order to cope with it. 
and we get again these weird lyrics, like when he couldn't remember when he fell in love with his crush. Where did time go? Tyler gave a lot of his time on this album. It's his most precious thing he gave to the guy. Where did it go? At that point, Tyler feels frustrated because this has happened before. He tried once, it didn't work. He tried again this time, it didn't work. And now that it's clear he can't move on, who's to say he won't crawl back to the guy a third time? He feels stuck. And he just repeats it over and over again like it's the only thing he can think of. Because what else can he do? Eric doesn't love him back, but he still wants to be with him. But this just might be better for us, you know? Now, from an outsider's perspective, this would be the perfect time to say to Tyler, don't do it. Because with just the fact that he says he can't move on on this song. You already know what's gonna happen. And maybe even you start to realize what's been happening from the very start of this album. Are We Still Friends starts with the words dream and Tyler repeating long ago, tying it with the lyrics from Gone Gone, asking himself if everything was a dream he can't wake up from, and also the few lyrics in the past songs where he seems to have lost sense of time. When did all of this really begin? It's like you can't remember the start of a very long dream. Are we still friends? It was inevitable. Tyler can't help but ask Eric, after everything we went through, can we still be friends? Is that okay? I've got to know. No. It's a really wholesome attitude that Tyler takes on in this song. But it seems this simple question doesn't come from a place of just let's hang out when we can and go our separate ways. It's not about just ending things on a good note. Contact, contact, don't say goodbye. It's about remaining friends just so Tyler can still stay close to Eric as much as possible. It's just as toxic as it was. If he can't have him as a lover, he can still have him as a friend. Throughout this album, he's trying things desperately over and over again for this guy to take off his mask and have a relationship with him. And it doesn't work until he crashes and has no hope, no will, no energy left. So he doesn't have the strength he needs to get out of this prison, this obsession he has for this guy. He hates this prison he created for himself. There's no way to get out, but there's one way to make it the best place he could ever be. A new hope that Things can work this time, for real this time. He can't say goodbye, not after everything he went through. And just like that, Igor ends. This album has a weird beginning and a weirdly unfitting end for a story, like what the fuck? All in all, this ending just shows the overwhelming obsession Tyler has over Eric, even after everything that happened. He's so in pain when he's not around him that he'll do anything to just keep contact. We're 
like at the climax, especially with this song, he's asking, hey, can we still be friends and hang out? And we don't even get the answer. Will Tyler convince Eric to take off his mask and actually try a relationship together? We don't even get that. It's kind of like we're missing something, right? But truth is, you already know how this story keeps going. I just explained it to you. Everything you just watched in this video is the beginning and the ending at the same time. Igor ends on an inconclusive note with its story, but also with its music. Some fans noticed that in music theory, a song like Are We Still Friends played in F major should end on F. That's just how it is. And it doesn't. It's inconclusive. In a way, it sounds wrong. But combined with the E-flat note in Igor's theme, it creates a complete piece. I've told you this story had happened before, and it's true. It's been happening forever. Igor is a loop. Tyler asks if Eric and him are still friends on the last track, which is a question answered on the first track, with Tyler starting to run. If he starts running, and he tells himself, he's gonna feel this one. We know Eric already said yes, but he's still unsure, so Tyler convinces him to stay. That this mistake he made taking his mask off and frightening his ex-girlfriend is his fault. And Tyler is full of hope this time. It's for real. It's gonna work. But it doesn't. And that's where Tyler realizes that he's a puppet stuck in a never-ending dream that he'll never wake up from. <laughs> In my opinion, Igor is not a real story. It's definitely based on a real experience Tyler had at some point. But it's more about illustrating this obsession over Eric to an extreme. Because that's always how Tyler the Creator's alter egos worked. It's a version of Tyler taken to an extreme and put into a story that contextualizes this personality to express a statement. Sometimes when you're deep in love, you can lose control of yourself and become a puppet at the mercy of the others' will. And it's crucial to not lose your sense of self in those moments. You're not a puppet. Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes you won't get what you want. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. During my research for this album, I saw a lot of people interpreting it as a heartbreak album. To me, I'm rather on the fence on that. This album illustrates a toxic relationship, an obsessive relationship. In Tyler's eyes, he is Igor, the mad scientist's assistant. Igor is nothing without the mad scientist. He's not gonna go find a new job or start his own thing. This job is all he ever was. If Igor is not helping his master, he loses all meaning. That's why he always decides to stick around. As time and time again, the mad scientist takes his attention away from him to work on his monster, his creation in a way and Igor is just stuck there to go through it all. It's a love story that never starts. It's constantly at your fingertips, but it never actually happens. He's just Igor, a side character to this guy's life forever. And every time he goes through the loop again, he realizes it and he's so frustrated about it. He lets all of this built up rage come out at once. So although the only thing Tyler wants is for this man to stay, the best thing for him is that he leaves. For real, this time. <laughs> <laughs>